Hi, you clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday over here in the Atlantic. We are all nervously watching Hurricane Irene just north of Hispaniola this morning, bringing heavy rains to the Dominican Republic and Haiti, but fortunately not being too much of a beast for them down here, sparing them the worst of its eyewall right now, and heavy rain bands are still lingering over Puerto Rico, bringing them even more rain on top of what they got. And now the core is starting to get close to the southeastern Bahamas, and they are next to see the direct impacts from Irene later today and tonight and tomorrow. This is the close-up view of Irene. The visible shows just hints of an eye trying to pop out here, a little bit of a darker shaded region showing up in the core here. This is still a storm that we mentioned yesterday was going to struggle until it got clear of Hispaniola because right now the mountains right here, all the southwesterly inflow coming into the eye is getting entrained off of the mountains and when that air comes down the mountain slopes it's sinking which means that it compresses, warms, and there therefore dries out, which means that a lot of dry air is getting pumped into Irene's eye wall right now, and you can almost see that there's a tongue of dry air that comes around and then tries to break up the clouds on the eastern side of the core here. This will be an issue for this storm for a while yet until she gets clear and more up into the Bahamas here. You can also see some outflow boundaries racing off to the west-northwest of the storm. These little boundaries here come when thunderstorms collapse, air sinks and hits the ground fast, spreads out, and forms these little boundaries that go racing off in all directions. And you can see that on the western side of the storm as there is still some dry air out ahead of it, and the storm is clearly weighted into the northeast quadrant. This is good news for the United States because she will likely remain a lopsided storm weighted mostly to the east for her lifetime. She will get better symmetric about her core when she gets up in here, but chances are she will never be perfectly symmetric as is the nature of most storms that come up towards the north and north-northwest when they near the eastern seaboard. Now we're going to be talking about the track more again today specifically, which is the biggest issue right now, and the trough is out here over New England here that we were talking about yesterday, and it's now starting to move out. You can see the axis is swinging out to the northeast here, and this is starting to leave. But we can see that there's a weakness back behind here um, that's staying behind over the southeastern states, currently over the Carolinas and Georgia right now, and we can see why this should probably avoid Florida, given that this weakness is going to be keeping the break open right over the southeast United States, probably bringing this up east of Florida, and Florida can probably start resting a little easier now, but that doesn't mean that tropical storm conditions won't affect the coastline because the track still brings it pretty close within 150 miles or even 100 miles of the coast possibly, which could still impact them easily with tropical storm conditions over a wide area. And these are the models here that we're looking at today. Irene's down here. A lot of them have become very bunched up. Recon data got input into a lot of these models last night, and we've seen them bunch up a lot better today, again, avoiding Florida, and they have shifted east now. And the overwhelming consensus here is over North Carolina and Cape Hatteras here with a good good number of models trying to scoot Irene off east of land altogether. And these are solutions that we can indeed hope for here. I do still think that this tries to get into the coastline here. It would be pretty hard to get this through the length of the Bahamas and then actually avoid the United States. It's hard to do that. I do think this will get over North Carolina here. So my track is shifting. It was in upper South Carolina yesterday. Just a small shift. And notice a day five shift by that much is not that far. But notice how far up the coastline we get. So now we're up northeast of Wilmington here, very close to the model consensus. And the OFCL track here is supposed to be the NHC. This has not updated on this map yet. The NHC is up here now as well, and I will show you that track in a little bit. Now, where we are, folks, right now is we've done our work, most of our work. We have the biggest part of our work left, but in terms of the long-range forecasting of this, we, we've done most of the meteorology. We, ha we set up the fact that we had the ridge in here, the ridge out here, the break was in between. We set up the southeast United States for a landfall from the hurricane when it was still way out here. We set up this area. We noticed how it reformed pretty far north in the Antilles and noted that the Carolinas would be put in the bullseye here a couple of days ago, and now we're in this this area of time where we are now focusing more on the models and relying more on very fine details that only the computers are going to be able to pick up very well and we can still do a lot 
as forecasters here. We've set up the idea, though, that this is coming into the Carolinas, and now it's up to the fine details that are going to be hard to pick out in determining an exact landfall. And we are still four days out here or so, which means we have a lot of time for things to shift around in here, and we could see things go either way. We could see more models try to curve it out to sea. We could see more try to shift back west, or it may remain the same in here. The idea, though, has been set up, and we're now talking about details in here. So we're looking at the GFS, 24 hours out, 500 millibars. Here's Irene, down near Hispaniola. The trough is leaving over southeast Canada, and you can see that the ridge in here is going to try to start building back. The weakness is directly here, which means this map implies a track towards North Carolina, which makes sense. And we got to 48 hours, our trough is gone, but our issue now is that the ridge is trying to build westward and force this north-northwest throughout its entire track, but we have a new short wave coming down over the Great Lakes. And this is the wild card here that's coming in. The models still disagree on the timing and strength of this. In fact, just the 0z GFS, which I'm showing here, and the 6 z run, the most recent one, have deferred already by quite a bit on the strength of this trough and how sharp it is in here. So there's a lot of disagreement still. And again, we're talking about going into three to four days out here, which still provides room for error. Again, the break is directly over the North Carolina, South Carolina border, implying that this moves in this direction. And then we go out and this the short wave, what it does is it tries to shave off the northwestern part of this ridge and break it down a little bit in here, which shifts the weakness over Cape Hatteras and allows for more of a north northeaster movement as this moves out. So then Irene comes towards that weakness. The weakness is now right over here, which implies a north northeast movement as this short wave leaves. And then we get out to day five here, and it's over Cape Hatteras. And the problem now is that the flow here in the upper levels is going to bring this right into New England. If it moves over North Carolina, it will not be the last land impact that we see. If it moves east of Cape Hatteras and we avoid a direct hit, which would be very nice in this situation if we could avoid that. We would probably avoid direct impacts on land after that, but if it hits land here, we're going to see impacts farther up here. So by day six, we see that it's moving right up here towards Long Island, and we're, we're possibly talking about an east coast storm here that moves right up the eastern seaboard and affects the main population centers of the United States in New England as a weakening but strong storm. Folks have to remember that a weakening category one in New England is a big deal. It really is. This is not a great situation for these folks. The European had a 971 cat two over these folks on last night's run, which was not a great thing to see. It had the right front quadrant right over Long Island, not something we want to have to deal with. So hopefully this trends east, but right now it is looking like a track into North Carolina and up here actually does make sense. So we're going to be watching this closely. Again, there's a lot of room for things to change chances are this is going to be pretty close to Floyd. And we can see that the track defers in here, but once it gets into the Bahamas, it's fairly close to what the models have right up into North Carolina near Wilmington or east thereof, and then right up into New England in here. And uh, this is worth bringing up here because Floyd, of course, was one of the more memorable storms for North Carolina. Notice how he reached peak intensity in the Bahamas here, and he ended up weakening before entering North Carolina. Now, this is the good news that is to be had, even if this makes landfall. The, there is some good news here that most storms, I cannot find a storm in history that I've looked at that has strengthened upon landfall in North Carolina if it was already a major down here. Most of these storms approach North Carolina from pretty far south as opposed to a direct track at a right angle to the coast. That would be North Carolina's worst nightmare. That doesn't really happen. Isabel got close, but she wasn't even strengthening a landfall, and these storms that curve up are generally weakening, and the reason why is because if you get a storm that's curving up east of Florida, by the time you get the storm in here, what you have is it's already got land masses to the west, and you're pulling dry air off the continent into the western side of the storm, which means that by the time it gets to North Carolina, it's already been moving over a stretch of water where a lot of dry air from the continent has been pulled into the storm. What's also happening is if you have have a, a cane that is moving up to the north, it means that there's probably a trough in here in the upper levels trying to recurve it, which is probably pumping dry air in here and also shearing the system a little bit out of the southwest. So that means that these hurricanes generally reach peak intensity in here and then weaken a little bit as they move towards landfall. 
and this is what I think will happen with Irene. Some weakening before landfall is likely. However, that could easily still put her as a major hurricane, a category three, maybe a high category two at landfall here, which is a, still a very big deal. This is the current NHC forecast at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm showing this because I'm in close agreement with it here. It brings it up to a major hurricane. Peak intensity will probably be in here. And I still think Irene could reach a low cat 4 in the northwestern Bahamas, 135, 140 miles per hour. And then she'll probably weaken to a low end 3, maybe a high 2 by the time she makes landfall in North Carolina here due to drier entrainment off the continent and a little bit of shearing due to her asymmetry, which shears herself not necessarily from the trough, but she'll end up shearing herself at that point, and then she'll move off and weaken as she moves in this direction. But again, category one up here near the Delmarva is not a great thing to have. It really is not a great idea to have that up in here. So folks are going to have to watch this at the eastern seaboard. Bahamas are about to get nailed. Hopefully folks are ready for this. This has a lot of time over water here, and things can get ugly for the northwestern Bahamas. They may be they may be the ones to feel Irene's full wrath at peak intensity. Hopefully folks are prepared in here. Again, Florida, probably not getting the direct hit at this point, but tropical storm conditions could still make it to the coast. The good news is that the western side is the weakest side, and thus they may get away with very little here. But still, tropical storm conditions could affect the coastline. Folks should be aware of that. And then South Carolina to North Carolina still need to be on guard for this. We could still see a shift left. We've still got several days here. It's not a guaranteed North Carolina hit. Most likely North Carolina, South Carolina from Charleston North should still keep a close eye on this here. And of course, North Carolina is in the bullseye at this point. We will hope for a recurve off to the east. I still think this makes it into the Carolinas, though near Cape Hatteras or a little bit farther west northeast of Wilmington we still have a while to watch this so things can change but folks should be ready and preparing for this as it could be a runner up the eastern seaboard that causes a lot of damages all right that's it for today thanks for watching